Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brittany. I am currently a physician assistant student on my second year. So right now I'm on my rotations. I just finished my infectious disease rotation, which was also my elective. And so I kind of wanted to give you an overview on what I thought about the rotation, what I liked, what I not, didn't like, how my experience went. So without further ado, um, if you haven't been on my channel before, I do rotation overviews. So because you have your seven core rotations plus your elective, at least for me, um, if you want to watch the other ones that I've already posted, I have a whole playlist. Um, you can go through them. I wrote down a couple things on my phone because I knew that this was going to be a video that I was gonna make so I have a whole list of things that I want to talk about first being just like what's the setting of my rotation it was inpatient I was at a hospital and it was solely just seeing patients in the hospital the attendings that I worked with they had an outpatient office but I never went there and I never saw their patients outside what did my day look like on a daily basis the hours that i worked were usually earliest was 8 15 um and then the latest i ever left was around like 6 30. i would say that was just for me though um i like to get there earlier because sometimes the attending would want around at 9 30 sometimes it was 10 30 and depending on how many patients I was following and how much time I thought I needed to do my own rounds on my patients, see them, chart review, prepare my presentation for that day, I would come in earlier and so my earliest that I would ever go in was around 8.15. I would give myself at least an hour to see my patients and to do all of the pre-rounding. If you're fairly new at it, I would say give yourself an hour and a half because sometimes your patient's not there, sometimes they're going down for imaging, they're doing other things, sometimes, you know, like things happen and so you want to have allocated time to see your patient and not feel rushed. On a daily basis, my job, I guess, as a student would be to do my pre-rounding and this is when I go to see my patient um, just catch up on how they're feeling and before I go in I like to chart review so I'll look at their vitals overnight make sure that they didn't spike a fever check on their morning labs and trend their leukocytosis any white count any differential to the CBC um, lactate levels ESR CRP any culture results any new imaging things like that from there I would go see my patients catch up on how they did overnight, ask them any of their subjective complaints, and if they didn't have any, move on to my physical exam. And then after that, I would head back to the residence lounge, and this is where I kind of recollect my thoughts and finalize anything that I want to say for my um, presentation to the attending. And then at a specific time, we would go to the attending's office and present. So sometimes we would round on the floors and sometimes it would just be in their office, but I liked both. I think they, I think that at first I really liked rounding on the floors because it helped me get a sense of direction of the hospital. I really think that that helped me like figure out where things were and um, just like how the number systems of the rooms worked. So that was really helpful. And then Rounding in the office was also nice because sometimes we would have computers So if you wanted to look up a certain lab value or imaging and, and just pull it up and look at it It was right there. So that was really nice and then after rounding in the morning It would just be solely to catch up on patients that we already were following from the previous day after morning rounds we would get lunch um, and then see new consults and that's the thing with where I did ID ID here was a consult service Which means you don't admit your own patients and you really just you get consulted by other services that are in the hospital whether that be medicine CT surgery um, Really like urology like any other Service that has their own patients. They could consult you for further advice and so um, we would get consults every day. I would say the most consults we had gotten in one day was about like 15 or so. Um, and then 
the resident would give me at most two new consults a day and I could not carry more than four patients in total. That was just something based on his comfort with me and how much I was comfortable carrying as a student. But after morning rounds, I would chart review on my new consults, read their HPIs, look at all their vitals, same things as I would do in the morning, kind of get their background, what they're coming in for, with like a brief summary of their picture in the hospital so far. And then I would go see my patient, ask them like why they're coming in, kind of clarifying things that I'm not certain about. And the thing that I learned about being an ID is you read these other notes with a sort of like take it in with a grain of salt because you want to trust what they're writing but you also want to clarify and confirm as well when you're talking to them also get a better picture right like i think a lot of people will just take what they see on other people's notes word for word and they'll just believe it 100 percent. but i think sometimes it's nice to just get your own interview and you know like maybe your assessment of the patient is different from what someone else has and so that's I think that's like one of the most important things I learned on this rotation especially because for ID you need to be so good at taking histories um, whether that be social history family history just like travel history all of these things are so important and I think I really truly just like learned how to master that skill on this rotation um so after I would see my patient write down all my findings um, and then we would do afternoon rounds with the attending again. This is where I would present a new case, um, give my assessment and plan. Sometimes I wouldn't really know what to I guess like treat the patient with because it's something that I've never seen before but I would give my two cents and say like whether or not I thought the patient had an active infection or something that they needed antibiotics for um, versus no treatment at all. So I would do that and then um, in that meeting the attending would either agree with me or disagree and we would come up with a plan for the patient and then after that I would go back to the residents room write my notes and the residents would communicate with the other teams to let them know what our plan was for their patient all right so my rating for this rotation I would say is like honestly a six out of a five I loved it so much I loved the attendings that I worked with they were all so lovely and wanted to teach were not degrading at all if I didn't understand something and they were so happy to explain it to me which just makes me excited to learn because I don't think I'm being judged as a student and I think it comes from a place where like ID is so overused in the hospital they get so many consults for things that can be managed just on the floors but because a lot of providers aren't 100% sure on antibiotics, which I totally understand. I think that's why they love to teach because they want other people to know more about their specialty, to have more of a understanding of antibiotics and coverage of certain antibiotics. And for me, that was my favorite part of the rotation. It was just antibiotic stewardship, I think. That really piqued my interest because I know how prevalent antibiotic resistance can be. To wait for cultures and sensitivities is like one thing, but also that just empiric therapy, it's almost like solving a puzzle to me. And I think that was something I really enjoyed. It was very much like stimulating to my brain. My autonomy as a student was so good. I would get to see these patients on my own and come back and speak with the attending. And when I wrote my notes, I would only co-sign with the attending. So I didn't even have to go through the resident. And at some point, it really felt like I was a true PA of a sense because I would see my patients on my own, do my own physical exam, talk to the attending, come up with a plan. And that's essentially what I'll be doing as a PA when I start working. So I really felt like I was doing something. I was helping the team. And sometimes I would bring up things that like either the resident forgot or the attending would forget and I would reach out to other hospitals to get culture results, imaging, things like that. So I really did feel like I was a part of the team and that I was contributing to some sort, which is also why I think I liked that my elective rotation was towards the end of my clinical year because I was... I had so much exposure already in the hospital that I kind of knew how things worked and like what was expected of a student. So I wasn't really floundering as much and I liked that I knew what I needed to do to like progress as a student and to progress in my learning. 
So because ID was a consult service, I really did not do any procedures at all. The only things I was really doing was maybe like unwrapping wounds and then rewrapping so that I could take a look at like someone's surgical site or doing a physical exam. I didn't really do much else. So if you're doing an ID rotation, I wouldn't expect to get many procedures from this rotation. All right, so the hardest part of this rotation, I would say is definitely like learning all the different bacteria, virus, drug names, and like everything like that. It was just, it was a lot. And um, aside from like S. aureus and strep, Klebsiella, like the big, big bugs, there's stenotrophomonas, there's just like things that I've never heard about or learned about. And so hearing about all of them, trying to remember them was kind of difficult, but with repetition, it comes like it stays with you. So don't feel bad if you don't understand everything your first day. As for things I've learned on this rotation, definitely how to do antibiotic stewardship because I've only ever learned in didactic year just in empiric therapy. Usually it's like Zosin for pseudomonas coverage and then MRSA you want to use vancomycin. But a lot of the times what happens with ID is you're now that step further where after empiric therapy you need to tailor antibiotics for a specific bug. And so you get cultures, you wait for sensitivities to come back and also the growth of the bug. From there, you recommend a certain antibiotic based on PO availability, what the patient can go home with, things like that. It's like all of this all-encompassing kind of puzzle where you need to make sure that the patient's able to get a pick line or will they need a midline based on their lifestyle. Um, can they afford to go home on PO versus IV antibiotics? Um, how long you usually want to treat for things like osteomyelitis and endocarditis you want to treat for at least six weeks things like cellulitis can get away with about a week or two weeks and then bacteremia is also something that happens a lot in hospitals so knowing length of duration is also really important this was the first time i've ever rounded with a clinical pharmacist and he would come to rounds with us he knew so much about these drugs vancotroph levels um what's the other dapto is it daptomycin or is it it's one of the mycins but there would be levels that you had to get to make sure that the medication was in the therapeutic range and so like all of this you would expect a doctor to know but sometimes like you don't and that's what the pharmacist was there for is kind of just like a backup to make sure that you're giving the right dosing the right time frame like everything like that you would go back to the id pharmacist and it was really interesting to see just like a team of doctors and a pharmacist work together because that's not something that i've never seen before and then like i said before on this rotation i learned how to take histories really well starting from allergies childhood and adult illnesses drug use alcohol use smoking travel history where you were born where do you live who do you live with occupation like all of these things are so important because you can have exposure to basically anything anywhere and ID is like this one big mystery where you're trying to figure out infection source and have source control and then like figuring out what you need to get to that goal. So yeah, I think essentially for me this rotation was so much fun because I love to do puzzles. I love to like figure out mysteries and things like that and so that really appealed to me. All right, so some tips for rotations in general. I had an antibiogram printed out, so I'm going to cover the hospital name. But essentially, this is what an antibiogram is. It just tells you the bugs in that hospital that are prevalent and what antibiotics worked for that specific bacteria in that hospital. So every hospital has its own antibiogram because bugs can grow resistance. So you wanna make sure that you're treating them and targeting them with the right antibiotics for that area and that general population. And so especially for ID, this is super helpful because it's different everywhere you go. So right, like, like ceftriaxone might work on a specific bacteria in one hospital, but another one it's breeding resistance. 
So that's why we use antibiograms. I also, every day when I would come in the morning, I would make a little cheat sheet. And what that means is like, I would have all the things about my patient on a piece of paper. And I'll kind of show you guys on my computer, but essentially I would have my patient's name, where they were located so that I could find them. And then their HPI, why they came in, what were their symptoms, and just like any subjective things that they had told us. And then my next column would be labs and imaging. So I would start with vitals and then move into their CBC, any relevant data, so lactate levels, things like that. BU and creatinine is super important as well because a lot of these antibiotics are renally cleared. And you want to make sure that they're having normal renal function so that you're not putting them into acute kidney injury or even if they have chronic kidney injury you want to make sure that their baseline is not getting worse any like trough levels imaging things like that culture sensitivities culture results and then i would have a column for assessment which is essentially why they're in the hospital what they have and their plan which is um, usually some sort of antibiotic Dosing is important as well as how often they're getting it. And then I would have a little like follow up plan what you need to follow up on, whether that be culture results, um, reaching out to a specific team, basically preparing me for the next day and what I need to do for the next day. And so every morning I would update this chart on my um, like Google Docs and then print out a new sheet for every day. So that's that was my cheat sheet. I walked around it with it everywhere and I would present from that. All right, so now I'm gonna show you a couple apps that I really liked to use for this rotation. The first one is Fax Burner, and I think a lot of people like don't know what this is. It is essentially a fax number that you can get on your phone. A lot of hospitals like need a fax number to send you things from one hospital to another because they don't like send through email. It's just not secure that way. And so I used fax burner because I needed a fax number, but I also didn't want to pay for one. And this will kind of give you a fax number for, I believe, a week or maybe it's like 24 hours. And you just get the facts to your phone, which is nice because then you can print it out and it's right there for you. So I would highly recommend that app. It's free, you get the number and then it changes every so often. I also really like to use this app called Lexicomp. It's an app where you can get drug drug interactions and a lot of these antibiotics have interactions with like warfarin, anticoagulants, sometimes them being SIP inhibitors or SIP inducers. Um, like rifampin is a really big one and so we wanted to make sure that if we were starting them on a certain antibiotic that it wasn't going to interfere with their other drugs that they were taking and so this would be super helpful. All right so I think that's essentially like the broadest overview of this rotation. I truly love this rotation so much. I think it might have been my favorite out of all of them so far. And I use this elective rotation as a modality to network because I didn't have to study for an EOR this time. And um, all I did was really make a presentation for school. And so I used it to network with other doctors and residents I was working with, especially the attendings I was working with. I asked them if they like knew of any job opportunities and how could I further my education should I do research? Things like that. And I got all of their emails. I have their numbers and they told me to reach out if I ever needed anything. And I think that's the sort of relationship you want to build while you're on these rotations, right? Like first and foremost, put your best foot forward so that they know you're interested. They know and they can see your potential as a student and possible employee in the future. But I also think like if you don't want to be in that field, it's okay. You can still network and know who they are so that if you ever need a reference letter, you can ask them and they would gladly like be happy to write one for you. And um, yeah, that's like my biggest advice is to know that when you're on these rotations, you're essentially doing a six week interview, right? You're not particularly trying to get a job, but if one comes along, great. What you do want to work on is putting your best self forward so that if someone is asking about you, you want to be spoken about in a great way, right? You don't want to be known as a student that was lazy, that went home early, didn't want to really round, didn't speak, things like that, versus a student that was present, 
wanted to learn, right? Would look things up, would help where needed. And I think that's all you can do as a student, right? I know a lot of people give a lot of pressure on trying to find a job while you're still on rotations. That's not, that's not what you're there for. And I think like if it does come, great. But don't put so much pressure on yourself to like make that jump, especially because when you graduate, you're gonna have so many so many opportunities to go on op like interviews, right? You're gonna have so many opportunities to really just cater to what you wanna learn, what you want to go into. There's no rush into finding a job right away because there's always gonna be one for you. So don't worry about that. And I learned that the hard way, I think like I, originally put so much pressure on myself. I enjoyed this rotation because I took a step back and I really thought like, I'm gonna use this as a learning opportunity. I'm gonna take in whatever I can and just not worry about trying to find a job right now. And I think that really helped me enjoy and like just really show my interest in this field. So with all of that being said, I kind of just wanted to give you guys a overview on what I saw on my rotation. This was the interesting case that I did for my presentation at school and essentially it was on malaria. Um, so we had a patient who came in recently traveled and he had untreated malaria so he relapsed and it was in, it was interesting to me because he really just looked like he had the flu right It was like fevers, chills, nausea vomiting and fatigue and it just stayed persistent for a couple of days and so that's why he presented to the ER. But um, what's important was his travel history and then also when they did labs, they did a blood smear and that's when they saw the parasite in his blood. Like I said, I love this rotation so much and I truly just like, I wanna go back so bad. I know one of my classmates is there right now and I'm so happy for him that he's there. Um, and I can't wait to like go back to class and just ask him what were the coolest things you saw? What did you learn? That's all I have to say about this rotation. If you guys have any more questions about it, definitely leave them down below. I would love to answer. And um, I'm gonna go to bed because I just finished my overnight for my current rotation. I'm so tired right now and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!